who, who are you? What do you do? And are you okay with this? Um, I'm Marie Noha. I own the coffee shop here on Madeline Island, and I um, am helping John to uh, make a documentary. And you're okay with that? And I'm okay with that. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. So, um, how did you end up here? How long have you been here? Um, I've been here about 17 years now, and uh, the island chose me. I didn't choose the island. Uh, came originally camping with our children uh, a long time ago and then when we got back to the area I had to come back and make sure everything was in the right place and we bought our house on a piece of land. The rest is history. <laughs> um, and then yeah so, so what did you end up doing here? Um, well I was here for a year and then this coffee shop, it was a coffee shop and came up for sale and I thought, I want to make it like Grandma's Kitchen, so that it's a place where people can come, feel warm, feel welcome, um, hang out, kids can play, um, make it a home away from home. So, um, what was it about, what, what have you discovered about the culture of the island that I'm, I'm talking more about the people who live here year-round. There's 200 residents or something like that. Two, about 240 of us, and uh, this community is a family. It's uh, much like where I grew up, where everybody knows everybody, and whether you like them or not, you help each other out. So it's uh, um, it's got a special air about it. There's so much history here that it just oozes out of the ground. And if you allow yourself to, it will, it reveals a lot of fun things to a person. Is it a history about the background of the people who live here, or is it, what, what, what could you expand on that? Um, to me, the history that's here is, has got to do with everything from the native culture to the French Canadians that came in, the first trappers. That whole evolving thing is is still here. The culture is here, and um, and it's something beautiful to embrace. Uh, tell me more about the Indian culture here. Is there there are there is a, there is a, some there are Indians here on, on some sort of reservation, right? There is the very north end of the island is part of the Bad River Indian Reservation. We have a huge um, native. Um, a lot of natives in the area. There's the Red Cliff area across the way. And um, it's just, this was their medicine island. And because of that, it's, there's a, there's a special feel that's here. You don't always uh, see that in other cultures. And because it is such a small community, um, I think you, you experience that a lot more than if you were in a city or um, something where there's always noise and bustle going around. It's, it's, uh, it's calming. A spiritual quality? I usually don't use that word, but yes, a lot of people would, would say that's what it is. It's, um, there are spirits here. It's uh, calming, like I said, it's, um, and the lake being what it is, the lake's the boss. And either you um, respect it or it'll take you down. So, <laughs> so I, have, I probably would have the same reservations about using the word spiritual mm -hmm. these days, especially considering the people who embrace yes. that, that part of it. Uh, so now, if you, if you were to compare the inhabitants of Madeline Island with like an outer ring suburb of Minneapolis, would there be differences in the personalities and characters of the people up here? Um, absolutely. I think that any, um, I have trouble expressing it because I grew up in a place much like this. It was very quiet. And when I go to the cities, 
and experience, even people I know, it's like they don't know how to breathe. And um, many times when they come here and visit, they manage to capture that, where it's like you leave your troubles on the other side and um, you say relax. That that damn truck, right? <laughs> I don't want that. It was too nice to waste on a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, growing up, very small town like I did, they have different personalities when you go into a city because people don't know how to breathe. They, they don't know how to just let things go and enjoy what's around them. And I think most of the people that live here have managed to capture that. Um, I can't go to the cities without feeling like I'm being choked out, so it's it's a very lovely community here. Would that be true of a lot of the, I mean a lot of the people up here that they're the same way they're they're kind of they want to get away from the madness. I think a lot of people do, and then um, and many of the visitors that turn into residents or spend their summers here um, feel that that calming effect on them. Um, and like I said, sometimes people that come and visit and stay a little while manage to capture that as well. So it's, uh, it's a good place to be. And I always invite people to come back and only bring nice people. So <laughs> because the ones that are so wired so tightly like that, I don't think they really appreciate what we have here. It's, um, they're, they're busy trying to um, spend money and get ahead and drive faster and all that stuff. And you don't have to drive fast here, so. Are there possibly some characters that live on the island? <laughs> There's all kinds of us characters that live on the island. <laughs> um, personalities of all kinds. And uh, just like anywhere else you go. But but they do all have, most of them have that, that calmness about them, most of the time. So. Unless they get worked up about something. Yeah. And that does happen on a regular basis too, so. So, so would they tend to be a more independent lot? I don't know that they're more independent. Um, it's almost like we are, like I said, we're a family. So sometimes you don't like all your family, but you're still family, and we work pretty well together. Most people are um, here for the good of the community. How about the pro-development versus the anti-development? Is there some of that on the island? Well, always, and many times we will have people come in, uh, maybe they come from the cities or Chicago or whatever, and want to fix us. Um, turn it into Coney Island or something. We don't need fixing. So <laughs> it's uh, progress. I think is inevitable, but it doesn't have to happen all at once. And I, I would like to see it happen in a slower, methodical way where we can keep our uniqueness about us, and yet. Um, so we have to move forward, but we need to also be able to take care of the people that we're inviting to be here in a proper manner. So there's there's a real balance there. So did, did that <laughs> desire to to kind of preserve the island or let it slowly develop, was there ever a rub with between that and the, and the Madeline Island Music Camp? I'm, not that I know of, not since I've been here, and I've only had Good experiences with the music camp. That is a fabulous institution. Um, the kids all want to be here, so they behave themselves. You know, they they know if it's their way or the highway. So, <laughs> you know, they they behave appropriately and love the concerts. The teachers that they get in are brilliant. It's good. It's all good. What I've noticed, and I've been up here now watching them for two years, is they're really, a, they're very disciplined. And they're, yes. they're, they're not up here so much to have a lark, and they're kind of programmed from yeah. eight in the morning until 
eight or nine at night. I yeah. get a break in the afternoon. But do, do you do you um, do you do you see them coming in here? They must come to town, or have you they met, do. Met talk to them? I do. I've I've talked with a lot of the kids, and it's always a joy when a group of you know five, six, ten of them come in, and they're from all different parts of the country, and all different economic levels and they're all buddies I mean you know and they don't they're like I said they're disciplined they're well behaved it's a very positive thing for Ireland I think and I think it's a very positive thing for those kids too um, talk about the, uh, the, the the beauty of the island a little bit more yeah what, what, what tell me what what really makes your heart flutter about the island I think for me it's maybe not so much the island as the lake. The lake is, uh, water has always been a draw for me. Um, and so um, without the lake we wouldn't be an island. It's got, it's got everything anybody could ever want. Uh, including bugs and black flies, you know, you just... <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that. <laughs> uh, so, so I'll wait until that car goes by. But, uh, <laughs> it's certainly going to be a, it's authentic. <laughs> but I wanted you with your business oh. in the background. Oh, right? thank you. Um, so, um, do you know anything? I, I'm just in pursuing the Indian culture a little bit. I read something whereby, I forget the name of the chief, but he told his people that this was an island where food grows on the water. Right. So what do you know about the Indian culture? Um, I'm learning more and more. Um, I had, in fact, I'm learning that I knew some of this stuff long, long ago before I even came here. Because where I grew up was where many of the um, Chippewa here were relocated in central Minnesota. And so I knew much of their culture. And the food that grows on the water is the wild rice. And um, I would strongly suggest that anybody that has any interest in that culture, and it's a beautiful culture, it's a little different than I'm used to, but um, would uh, visit our museum. And they have a fabulous program there and people that can tell them a lot about what goes on here. So, yeah, our island, where food grows on the water. <laughs> I was thinking that, uh, that I want to play on that a little bit about the music camp, where the, the music is food for the soul. There you go. On the water. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to find some uh, a native person that would be willing to talk about that, too, if there was one that I could, maybe the museum could tell me something. Maybe the museum could find um, someone for you. Um, like I said, I find the culture um, fascinating because it falls back on a lot of the things that I um, grew up with as a child. And so I find I know things that I didn't know I knew. <laughs> where, where, where in central Minnesota? Uh, outside of a little town of Browerville. Say that again? Browerville. Oh, Browerville, yeah. <laughs> I grew up on That's the Long Prairie west. River. And it's almost dead center of Minnesota. That's west from where I live. Right, okay. <laughs> I live in Afton, Minnesota. Okay. So We know Afton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another kind of interesting and different community with a lot of characters. In yes. It. Yeah. yeah. And that's, from what I know of Afton, it's more, it's almost more clicky, touristy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess the last question I have is you, you, you're someone who takes in the events. Where, where have you gone to those events? And just describe uh, your, you, know, you've got, you seem to have enjoyed them, but tell me more about that. Events, oh. Concerts, that kind of thing? The concerts I have, I have gone to the concerts up at the music camp. Um, I've been invited by the, some of the teachers to sit in on the classes. Um, I always enjoy the events that they have at the museum because they are so culturally rich and significant to the area. 
Um, I've been up to Big Top Chautauqua a few times, which is a trip in itself. Um, in fact, last year I saw Gordon Lightfoot. So, a little more history there. So, um, like I said, this the, the area here is so, we have so much without going anywhere that people um, really don't understand that. It's, it's, uh, and the ones that come and look at me and say, what is there to do? I feel like they're in the wrong place because there is something to do every second, every day here. I would agree with you. <laughs> so what would you say to the, mus the Madeline the Music Camp on their 30th anniversary, which is this, they're having a big celebration on July 21st? I would say congratulations, keep up the good work, and keep making music. <laughs> oh, one other thing, Chris. Uh, Tom George, do you know Tom? I do know Tom. So any, any comments about Tom? Um, he's one of our characters. He would admit that himself, so I don't feel bad saying that. I've known Tom for a long time, and uh, he's always so supportive of those kids and really runs a tight ship. He's, it's good. It's a good good space for those children to come. Great. So is there anything else you'd like to add that I didn't think, didn't think of? I don't have hand. I'm kind of a simple soul. Oh. So... <laughs> Well, I really enjoyed this, and you, you really were a great interviewer, and I, I got some fun stuff. Yeah.